Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation and today we're chatting battery isolators. Let's go ahead and show you what these are for and how to install one on your vehicle. Provo Beast Audio Installation channel is sponsored by NVX and Sonic Electronics. Get 10% off all speakers, amplifiers, wiring kits and more with coupon code PBAI at NVX. Also get 5% off all car audio components at Sonic Electronics with coupon code PROVOBEAST. Alright, so we have this battery isolator here on the bench. Uh, this one is supplied by NVX Audio. Um, today we're going to go over why you would need one of these and how you would install one. Now a lot of you may be asking, do I need one of these on my car? Well, generally speaking, battery isolators isolate just that. They separate two batteries or multiple batteries in your vehicle, depending on the application. For example, this would isolate the primary battery and secondary battery bank in the trunk while the car is off. A lot of the time that's popular for those that like to listen to music with the car off. It protects your primary battery in that you don't drain it or uh, ruin the battery with overuse. Now, battery isolators can also be used depending on the types of batteries that you're running in your car. Sometimes, for example, if you're running a lead-acid battery up underneath the hood and, and a sealed AGM battery in the trunk, it's best when the car is not being used to separate those as one may drain the other. Now, taking a look a little bit closer at this isolator, you'll notice you have two larger posts and two smaller posts. These two larger posts are essentially your ins and outs from one battery to the other, and when this isolator is activated, those posts internally are combined or they close the circuit. Now these two ones are your trigger posts. One's generally at ground. The other one goes to probably an ignition source of some kind, triggering this isolator to close the circuit, connecting your front battery to your rear battery. Obviously, we'd want those to connect while the car is running so your primary alternator under the hood can charge your secondary battery bank. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to essentially show you how to install one of these on your car. Now, like I said, you can actually install these really anywhere between both batteries. Some do it under the hood, some do it in the trunk of the vehicle, so it totally depends on your installation. We actually chose the trunk of the vehicle just for demonstration purposes, so we're going to head over to our WRX and get this installed for you today. Okay, so here in the trunk of the vehicle of our WRX, we actually have already built and mounted a board to where we've mounted a battery, some fuses, an amplifier, and some crossovers. It's just a good way to actually get everything on one board. What we're going to do here in this empty space is mount our isolator. Now we have an input and an output and some of these wires hanging off. There's four of them here, and as you remember, we have four post connections here on our isolator. So essentially what we're going to do, this wire here is a one aught gauge coming from our primary battery and alternator up front. This is our charge cable. Now, of course, we don't want this connected to our secondary battery all the time. In the event, for example, we are listening to music and the car's off, we don't want our primary battery to also die. So what we're going to do is actually get this mounted here in this point. And then we're going to connect our two main posts and connect our two smaller posts. These two smaller posts, one's a ground and one's actually connected to the ignition source in the fuse box, which essentially is only on when the car is running and running only. All right. So we've chosen our location, we've got our isolator mounted, let's go ahead and do some wiring. Okay, so with this mounted, we're actually ready to begin connecting our wiring. Now, like I said, being that this is our charge wire, make sure your primary battery is disconnected so you don't have a live wire as you're hooking this up. What we're gonna do, again, it doesn't matter which post you actually hook it to, but we're gonna actually put it on this post. Now this end, as you can see, it actually goes down to a fuse and our secondary battery bank here. But what we're going to do with this end is actually put it on the other side. Now this portion here, these smaller wires, remember one's a trigger wire and the other one's a ground. Let's grab our positive, put it towards the back terminal here. 
And same thing with our ground wire. Let's tighten everything up. There's four. All right, so here's a little closer look for you. Again, we got our charge wire coming in and then our outgoing wire that goes down through a fuse to our secondary battery. And then from the secondary battery goes through another fuse to our five channel amplifier by NVX. Okay, so we have this all set up here so we can show you what the, the voltage will actually look like. Now the car is off when we touch the, our current from the front battery and alternator. We're showing 12.7 volts at resting. And our secondary battery is reading 13.1, 13.2 volts. What we're gonna do is show you the voltage now. Since this has been activated by the engine running with this positive wire here, we're gonna show you the voltage between both posts. So this one here with the alternator going is about 14.4, 14.5 volts. What we're gonna do is now touch the other post here and we're gonna read the same. This just shows with this wired correctly that when the car is off, both batteries are indeed isolated. When the car is running, this connects both posts together, charging both our primary battery and giving 14-ish volts to our amplifier. Um, by the steering column, we have our fuse box, for example, in this WRX. Now, the wire that you may need to tap into for your positive trigger wire on your isolator may be located um, a source here located on our fuse box. Now, most of the time you'll have some sort of diagram to identify what fuse goes where. What we're looking for is more so a running source or only on when the car is running and started. And a lot of those um, switches actually may be um, under ignition. So what you'll wanna do is actually using a multimeter begin to find out which source is only on when the key is on and the car is running. Now, like I said, every installation is different. Some may argue having the same battery under the hood and here in the back of the car, an isolator isn't needed and that, that may be the case. That's totally up to you and your install. But that's about it. If you have any questions about, about our isolator, what it's for, how to install one, or where to purchase them, go ahead and post a comment below. Like I said, I'll put a link down in the description if you want to see this one specifically that we picked up from NVX. Thanks guys for watching the channel. I appreciate your support. Hey, don't forget to subscribe down below and we will certainly see you in the next video.